Hi, this is Pastor Rick at Living Hope Baptist Church in Hemet, California. I'm glad you joined me. I want to read to you from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, what is often called the Lord's Prayer. I'm going to call it the Model Prayer. It's a prayer that Jesus taught to his disciples. It goes like this. When you pray, you shall not pray like the hypocrites. For they love to pray, standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. As surely I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room. When you shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. Um, Jesus was instructing them to be sincere, just to be honest with God when they prayed. Not to pray for others to hear them, but to pray to the Lord whatever's on their heart, just in sincerity and in truth. I read a story one time how... Uh, President Johnson was in his office in the White House and they were having a prayer before a meeting and he asked Bill Mayer, who was on his staff at that time, to uh, lift up a prayer and so he began praying and President Johnson interrupted and he said, um, you have to speak louder, I can't hear you. And the one who was praying said to the President of the United States, he said, I wasn't speaking to you. <laughs> I thought it was pretty cool. Um, but some people pray just, they even change their, their language. You know how they get that religious language going, that spiritual tone and uh, waxing eloquent just to try to make an impression upon others. And he says, Jesus says, they have their reward. In other words, they're just praying to be heard by other people. But he's saying to, to uh, his disciples to pray in this way. Now, this is not the prayer that's intended necessarily to be repeated and repeated and repeated, but it's a prayer that he was explaining to them how to, how to approach God the Father. He said, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and do not lead us into temptation but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. When he says our Father in heaven, he's obviously speaking to those who put their faith and trust in God and um, that we would approach God saying, hallowed or holy is your name. What is the name of God? Well, Moses asked, who shall I say sent me? And he said, say I am sent you. What that means is the one who is I was and who is and who always will be, the eternal God. He says, speaking to him, realizing he is without any sin. So we need to approach God in a very humble and a very reverential manner. He says, your kingdom come. What that means is um, submitting to the rule of God in your life, surrendering to him as Lord, and he says, may your will be done here as it is in heaven. Well, in heaven, there's no more sin. So he's saying we need to pray that God would so change us that we would begin living a life of obedience to him. And of course, that pleases God and it will be a blessing to you. And he says, give us this day our daily bread. It means ask God for the daily needs that you have, not asking him, oh, Lord, help me to win the Powerball. If I had the Powerball, I'd really, really be satisfied, really be happy. What he's saying is just ask God for your daily needs. And he says, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our others, our debtors. That one is extremely important. We all know that we need to ask God or should, that we need to ask God for forgiveness. But who are we to ask God for forgiveness and be unwilling to forgive others? He even goes on after this prayer. He says, if you forgive men, for, if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. It is really arrogant for a person to ask God for forgiveness 
and yet be angry with and unwilling to forgive others. <clears throat> I think all of us need to examine ourselves and say, is there someone that I'm holding a grudge against? Someone that I'm unwilling to forgive? If so, we need to go back to God and say, God, help me to get right about this. Help me to forgive others the same way you forgive me. I hope that's an encouragement to you to pray with sincerity and humility and to restore relationships or seek to with others before you think you have a healthy relationship with God. God bless you. I hope to see you next week.